Now the other day we had a look at some capacitors on component close-up. The Mullard C280, the tropical fish capacitor. Very pretty. Now of course those capacitors that we had a look at there were all fixed value. In other words, they were manufactured to a particular capacitance value in, in, in microfarads or picofarads and they remained that way the whole time. They didn't change. What if we wanted to have a capacitor that was adjustable or variable or we could use to tune a radio? In other words, a capacitor which has a knob on the front where you turn the dial and that varies the capacitance and the varying capacitance changes the frequency of oscillation of an oscillator in the radio. Well, you'd use a capacitor like the ones we're looking at now, which are all variable capacitors. Now, some of these are variable uh, in, in intended to be screwdriver adjusted. Others are meant to have a knob on the front, quite literally. Let's start with the smaller ones, which are the, um, the ones which are screwdriver adjustable. Here's one. So this thing is a variable capacitor and it has the capacitor plates, you can see that along here we've got a whole bunch of metal plates alternating between connected to the revolving shaft and to the, uh, this, this terminal. The shaft goes through the front here to this is a screwdriver slot and you can put a screwdriver through there. This attaches to a panel. These are quite old parts, it's ceramic probably meant for a valve circuit, so quite high voltage rating. Um, and quite big compared to a modern variable capacitor. Um, that's probably the capacitance in picofarads, 2.3 to 14.2. When the plates are fully meshed like that, it's at 14.2 picofarads. And when they're fully unmeshed, let me see if I can get the screwdriver in there, it'll go down to the the two picofarads or so. It'll never go to zero. There'll always be some capacitance there. Let's get this to focus. There we go. And we turn and the blades of the capacitor unmesh. And you can see that they're semicircular, beautifully manufactured so that they mesh perfectly. Whatever you do, don't bend them so that they scrape. And they are half meshed. Um, a little difficult to really show that moving but there it goes and fully meshed again to the 14 or so picofarads so that's really quite a stylish bit of kit I think um, I say probably for a valve circuit of some kind probably from the 1960s um, made the expensive way right so how else can we vary the capacitance of a capacitor. Well, we can make something like this. This, I think, was called a beehive capacitor. In its fully unmeshed state, we have concentric plates there and there, and a little sort of narwhal dusk thing. Um, you turn the screw thread, there it goes, and these things mesh but don't touch, hopefully. If the thing is accurately made, they should simply um, mesh without touching. The adjustment is simply twiddle that. It looks very much like this is meant to be grounded. There's a big bolt on this end of it to ground and that's connected to the little narwhal tusk, a little screw thread and a helix at this, this end. So you shouldn't affect the circuit too badly by twiddling it because uh, it's grounded. This is the bit that isn't grounded and is insulated with the ceramic again in there. Uh, so minimum capacitance and then as you adjust the capacitance goes up. I don't know how many picofarads this would be. Not many picofarads. Not very high capacitance. The spacing between the plates is quite high and the plates aren't very big so that's going to be quite a low capacitance. Another one here, similar kind of thing with a screwdriver adjustment. Um, again it's made of ceramic with something is metallized under here it's a little bit more enclosed you can't see the moving uh, plates but they must be in there somewhere that could be a metallization sort of half round there um, screwdriver slot so it's meant for a preset adjustment to tune something uh, on the production line or in a maintenance operation some bolts to bolt it down with and 
the body of the thing is ceramic. So high voltages are fine in this kind of thing, um, probably from a valve circuit again from the 1960s. Um, let's look at another one here. This one is very similar to the one we saw before with um, plates that mesh and unmesh. I wonder if I can actually turn that one by hand. Um, if I can, that would be... There it goes. Um, so we can just turn that and the plates unmeshed, minimum capacitance, and then mesh back up again to the maximum capacitance. Those plates look a little bit like they might even be silver plated. And the ceramic body of this thing is this might be quite a classy bit of kit for high frequency use. The silver plating um, to counteract the skin effect that you get with high frequency currents flowing only in the very surface of the conductor. So you plate it with silver, which is a better conductor than copper. Not by much, but just enough to make a difference. Um, so what else we got? Well, we've got something a little bit, a little bit at the cheaper end of the market for adjustable. This is an RS components, 250 picofarad uh, compression trimmer, as it was called. Um, I've had to go at this. I made this into a radio at one point. I've cut the terminals off to make it a bit smaller. And I've actually attached uh, what passes for a tuning knob on the front there. So as you turn it, you can actually see the uh, the plates of the capacitor in this case are squishing together and opening apart. So there must be an insulator in between the plates. And I think that's mica. I think you can just see some little little leaves of mica insulation. Mica is a mineral. It can be cleaved into thin uh, thin sheets or leaves and there's some mica in between the plates of the capacitor and as you tighten down the bolt it just brings the plates tighter together and that would be quite sufficient to tune a little I believe I made a little tiny radio in a tic-tac packet this thing uh, UK made uh, 250 picofarads intended to have a a screwdriver adjustment on the on the bolt here but I've fitted it with a knob so that I can adjust it as a tuning control back in the 70s that was now let's go up a little bit in size look at this thing this is the tuning capacitor from a radio um, I would put this one in the 60s or 70s again a very similar construction the plates of the capacitor are simply an air dielectric, the plates are parallel and um, unmesh or mesh fully. There's a little bit of an insulator on this end which keeps them evenly spaced and also acts as an end stop. Um, minimum capacitance position and maximum capacitance position. So the moving veins of the capacitor are grounded. They're grounded. Um, the whole um, shaft here is, is metal. The outer can is, is metal. Uh, there's a little, I think you can just see down there, um, there's actually a ball bearing and a wire. That wire is grounding the, um, the rotating shaft and the ball bearings make it lovely and smooth for tuning your radio. Um, then the fixed plates are on insulators. There they are, little ceramic insulators. There are two sets of fixed veins and two sets of moving veins, and they're slightly different sizes. The reason for that is this is intended for a superhet radio. Superhet radios have a thing called a local oscillator and an RF amplifier. One of these capacitor banks will tune the RF amplifier and the other one will tune the local oscillator. Together that tunes the radio. Um, they're different capacitances because they work at slightly different frequencies. Um, one capacitor is slightly bigger than the other. You may wonder why they're a funny shape. They're not D-shaped, they're a funny sort of snail shell curve. The reason for that is this is intended for tuning a radio and the rotation of the shaft is proportional to the frequency 
that you get from the oscillator. So the shape of the plates has been cut at the factory very carefully to make the tuning scale linear. There'll probably be a, a, a dial on the front of this, a, a, possibly a, a pulley and some string to the um, sort of high, slightly high tech string to the tuning dial. So you turn the tuning knob itself, it pulls the string, it turns the uh, pulley on this thing but you end up with a linear tuning scale. So the uh, capacitance variation is non-linear, but the frequency that the oscillator works at, you get a linear tuning dial. Quite cleverly done. There would be associated with this some adjustment. Now there we've got on the bottom some more compression trimmers. And once again, we can uh, bring a screwdriver in. We can adjust that a little bit. Um, we can bring a little bit of extra air gap in there, some mica insulation again, a bit corroded this one, uh, so we can make some fine adjustments to the capacitance. This brings the two halves of the component into sync with each other so that they are tracking each other correctly and will also be used to bring the tuning dial into alignment with the actual frequency of the radio station to try to tune in. Standard practice for making a radio tuner and these things have been made in the thousands for radio tuners of the well from the 1950s through the 1970s I suppose um, can't really see I don't think that's a date code could be I suppose but anyway um, that's an expensive bit of kit to make so in the 70s this kind of thing came along this is a tuning capacitor from a 1970s transistor radio. Um, it's got a plastic case, which keeps the dust out. It's got um, plastic insulating sheets. You can just see the sort of pale coloured um, plastic uh, sheets in there. So this thing, rather than having an air dielectric, it's a bit smaller. The plates are closer together. It has a plastic dielectric. And it's got four adjustable um, trimmer capacitors on the back here. They look like, rather than compression trimmers, they're actually um, the interleaving vein type. Probably with little plastic washers to make um, insulation, rather than having to make everything so precise that the veins interleave. This is probably made with plastic insulation so that the veins can rub together and that's okay there's insulation in there so I don't know why there's four of those but okay there we are um, it probably is at least two separate variable capacitors inside there quite hard to tell uh, for the same reason you have to have one for the local oscillator and one for the um, RF amplifier I don't know if we can see we can see it going round and there's something metal on half of that and something plastic on the other half but it's quite hard to see exactly there it goes there's the there's the veins of the capacitor going past but they are protected from rubbing against each other by the little plastic interleaving insulators the screw is going to this into the radio and the shaft is flat so on there'd have been a, a pulley of some kind on here again to operate a piece of string dial cord as we used to call it uh, that would actually operate the, the tuning dial of the radio. Probably the very similar construction internally with the funny shape veins to this one. You can't unfortunately see that. Um, much more, you can see it's much more compact. So this is again a reduction in size from the transistor radio of maybe the 60s to the 70s. Uh, make it all smaller constant um, constant efforts to make everything smaller in electronics. So there we have some interesting, I hope, uh, adjustable and variable capacitors, uh, fairly low capacitance. I mean, these, these sort of things were only about 300 PF, 300 picofarads. Some of these but a bit lower. Um, fair selection there all different types and sizes so if you like that please do click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more interesting i hope uh component close-ups